Hello friends, it's Nomad Brad coming to you from my box truck at my dad's house in Yuma, Arizona. So it's a little bit overcast today, a little chilly. Uh, the morning especially was pretty cold. And so I thought it would be a great moment to do a diesel heater review. I've had quite a few people that have watched my previous diesel heater install videos and they wanted a follow-up report on how they've been performing. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing for you right here, right now. So my bed is currently in day bench mode. This is my regular seating bench. This is my kind of lounge work area. And so the diesel heater is located right underneath the bed. I'm gonna go ahead and slide back the cushions to give us access. All right, so here is a top view. I know you guys can't see a lot. We'll go underneath in a minute, but here's the top view of my heater. Again, it is the all-in-one unit. I installed it underneath my slat bed and I did install the heater before the slat bed. And so the way it worked out, the, this is the fuel filler right here. It's not perfectly centered between the slats, but um, I can still access it and the fuel goes right in here. And so it's really easy to refill this unit, it only takes me a few seconds. The built-in one gallon tank actually lasts me quite a while. Now I wanna show you really quick the gas can that I have because I think you guys are really gonna appreciate this. So I keep my diesel tank down here so this is one of those new safety gas tanks, which I absolutely hate. You know, it's all the childproof gas safety stuff and it's just a nightmare. So I wanna, I wanna show you guys a couple things. Okay, so if you guys have one of these cans, you can understand my hate. Now, normally they have this little filter inside. It's like a white plastic insert and it has a bunch of perforated holes in it. It almost looks like a cheese grater. And they put this in there so that it's like some kind of anti-splash thing so you can't dump diesel fuel out. Like you can't, you know, throw it on something and start a fire. The problem with this design, which I would argue is even more dangerous, is that when you're trying to fill it at a diesel pump, usually the gas, the diesel fuel comes out so fast that the little filter that's inside can't keep up. And so then your diesel ends up spilling over the top and you get diesel everywhere. And then you gotta put this like diesel covered fuel tank back inside your van and it's stinky and it's a big fat mess. So what I did on this unit is I just took a pocket knife and that little insert is just like a cap that inserts down inside and I just pried it with my pocket knife on like four sides and popped it right out. So I popped it out and removed it and then now it's just a regular diesel tank and you can fill it fast with the big diesel hose and it doesn't have any backsplash. So that's a little hack for you guys. Um, if you have one of these safety cans, pull out that damn filter and it'll make your life a lot better. Now, let me tell you, there's one thing I actually really like about this safety can. And what I really like about it is the nozzle will not allow gas to flow until you click in, you click in this button like that, and then you have to physically push down on this knob like that. And once you do that, gas will flow. Check this out. I can turn it upside down, right? Upside down, no gas coming out. So this is actually the perfect companion for the diesel heater. You rest the nozzle, on the edge and push it down and then it'll start filling. So it's actually, you don't need a funnel or anything. It's really easy to get diesel into the heater under the bed with this configuration. So I wanted to show you guys what that looks like. I'm super happy with how that works out. Now let's go ahead and fire this thing up and we'll drop down below and I'll show you guys a little bit more what I'm working with. All right, so we are down in the belly of the beast. So there's a look at the heater again. It is the Vivor all-in-one. They don't sponsor me. I literally bought this unit because it was the absolute cheapest one. I think it was $120. Uh, it's pretty well built though. It has a nice metal cage to it. It has a fuel level indicator here. So you can kind of, I just kind of peek down and see what the fuel level is. Just has a simple uh, positive battery terminal and a negative battery terminal. And it comes with the wires that you can just run directly to your 12 volt battery bank. The intake and exhaust ports are right underneath. They go straight down into the ground. So here's a view from under my box truck of the 
intake and the exhaust piping. Now, uh, when I first installed the video, I had obviously the intake just coming out here. This is your fresh air intake. And then I had the exhaust just pointed back this way towards the tire. Uh, but what I did notice is when I ran the diesel heater, uh, I think because the exhaust was just trapped under the body, uh, it, I did notice a smell inside the rig. So somehow, uh, you know, the exhaust fumes were getting up into the cab. So I went ahead and installed this flush mount exhaust kit for the diesel heater. You can find these on Amazon. I think they're about 20 bucks. And uh, this is what they look like on the outside. It's a really high quality piece of stainless steel. It's very thick. And so your factory diesel heater exhaust pipe just slides right over the end and i just used a hole saw i forget exactly what size but just use a hole saw to drill through my plastic sheeting and then you slide the exhaust port through and i used bolts and i used bolts to secure it down so very simple to attach i definitely recommend uh, when you're doing your installs to not have the exhaust vent underneath the vehicle but rather have it come completely outside. And then on the front of the unit, you have uh, the controller. It has a little clip, a little spot to clip the controller on, or you can unclip it and mount it somewhere else. And then it has your, uh, and then it has your warm air output hose. So I still need to uh, mount that hose properly, but you know how it is when you're doing van builds, you start one project, and then you realize you can't complete one project until you've done something for another project. And so in this case, like I couldn't mount the heater hose till I did the slide bench and it's just a whole story. So anyway, I haven't got around to it yet, but, but it's been working fine just as is. I just have the hose flopping here. And of course I only run the heater, uh, you know, with the bench out. And so the, the warm air just comes right up in here and heats up the cab nicely. We'll do a little test run, but I'll show you guys what the display looks like right now. This is just the default display. It's just telling me that it's currently getting receiving 12 volts, and it tells me the current temperature is 21 degrees Celsius, whatever that means. <laughs> I'm I live in America, so I don't know what 21 degrees Celsius means, but I'm guessing that's around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So the limiting factor with the Chinese diesel heater is uh, you can't really set a temperature set point. So like with the house thermostat, you can just set it for heat and set your thermostat for 70 degrees and your furnace will just turn on or off as needed to maintain 70 degrees. But the way these Chinese diesel heaters work is basically you have to physically press a button to turn it on and it will just run indefinitely until you turn it off. So you can adjust the output setting and how hot or how cool the air is, but otherwise the furnace, the diesel heater does not have the ability to turn on and off on its own. Most of the heaters come with a little remote like this. It has a on off button and a temperature up, temperature down button. So that's your only options. Uh, turn it on, turn it off, more heat, less heat. That's it. Until recently. So I got sent this unit, it's called Burek CD Thermostat. This is what it looks like. This is a digital programmable thermostat. So regardless of what diesel heater you might have, as long as it has a wireless remote with it, you can use this programmable heater remote. And so I'm gonna show you guys how this heater remote works and how awesome it is, just because I really love it and I think it will really uh, complement your diesel heater. And so there's a little on off switch on the side. You just slide it up. And then uh, here's the display. Sorry, it's a little flashy. Uh, for some reason, the GoPro, the GoPro doesn't really like filming LCD screens. But anyway, you can see it's telling me that the top is the current temperature 75. The bottom is the set point 71. Sorry about that guys, it's just gonna be blinky, but just trust me in person, it's not blinky. In person, it just, it looks like a regular LCD screen. So sorry you can't really see it, but basically uh, you can, there's a schedule here where you can set it to turn on and turn off. So say for example, you wanted the heater to 
uh, kick on at 7 a.m. and heat for two hours and then kick off. You could easily just program it right here in the settings. But otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use uh, the static setting. So I'm going to go over here and turn the heater to thermostat active. And then I'm going to set the temperature above the current temperature, which the current temperature is now 77 is what it's reading. So I'll turn it up a little bit. And there it is right away. It says heating down in the corner. I know you can't really read that. And the red light comes on on the thermostat to let you know it's it's running. And now if we look at the diesel heater, we can see that it's set for H3. So the diesel heater received the signal from the remote and already there's uh, air cycling out of the vent. All right, so we're hanging out in bed. We're pretending it's a cold, blustery morning. It's 50 degrees out. We're so cold, we don't want to get up. So I just reach over, grab the Burek thermostat. And now the heater is basically at full blast. You could hear the fan kicked up, the fuel pump speed kicked up. I'll let you guys hear again from up here on top of the bed. So there's definitely a little bit of sound to it. Honestly, once the blower kicks in, I think the blower is actually louder than the fuel pump itself. So anyway, it's not that loud. In my mind, it's fine. And uh, you know, for me, it's kind of a comforting sound. I mean, it's like you hear the, the blower running, you get that hot, hot warmth, and it's just not an issue. So I think it's been a great unit. I'm super happy with how it's worked out. We'll go outside and check the exhaust port, see what's happening. So I just wanted to recap the video. I've personally been using the cheap Chinese diesel heaters for over three years now. I've never had one fail on me. I've never had warning issues or error codes. And I really believe it's all to installation related errors. I'm on a lot of Facebook threads and the number one problem that I see with these installs is people trying to cut corners and they leave the intake inside their van and so people are well intentioned their thought is well if it's pulling in warm air from the van then it's going to be more efficient and the heater is going to work well false what happens is when you're pulling air from inside your van and then you're exhausting air outside your van you're creating a vacuum so what's happening is whatever air you remove from your van has to be replaced. So that means your diesel heater is actually working harder, it's sucking harder, and it's gonna be pulling air from your windows and your doors and any gaps, any air gaps or, or holes or cracks you have in your vehicle that allow outside air to come in and you're not gonna be saving any efficiency because now you're pulling in more cold air from the outside and that can create pressure issues. And also now you have a diesel heater that has hot incoming air temperature. And the whole point of the intake and exhaust is you're trying to cool down your heater. So now instead of your heater having cold outside air to cool down with, your heater has to cool down with warm air from inside your van. So you're doing nothing but making your, your heater work harder and you're being lazy by trying to not cut two holes in the van. So that's my number one tip. I see it all the time. When you're doing a diesel heater, you must have your intake and exhaust coming from outside the vehicle. And I even installed one for my friends Jeff and Sophia on their school bus when I was in Austin, Texas uh, a couple months ago. And I met with them at Schoolie Palooza and they used their cheap Chinese diesel heater the whole time we were there. And Jeff was commenting on how awesome it was and how much it just totally blasted them out because it was so hot. So they love it and I love it too. So I would recommend for you guys considering, get the cheap one, make sure you install it properly because for the price of one brand name $1,200 German diesel heater, you could buy 10 cheap Amazon diesel heaters for the same price. So I think it's worth it. Get the cheap Chinese diesel heater and you're gonna love it.